Today, we'll create a script-only install package for macOS. Basically, we'll take a script and turn it into an installable package. Um, so what are we talking about when we're talking about a, a install package? Well, it's the file with a .pkg extension that's typically used to install apps on your uh, macOS. So why would you want to create a package that only runs a script? Well, sometimes you need to distribute a script that performs a specific task, um, such as fixing a known issue. And it's pretty easy for you to give your users a package, which they just double click and go through, through the install process. It's a pretty easy user experience, as opposed to telling them, oh, you have to go take the script, you know, pass it command line arguments, open your terminal, etc. Uh, is just an easy way to deliver a script um, to a non-technical user. Another reason you might want to uh, have a script as your package is in case you have some kind of a customizable third-party installer um, and you don't want to use the uh, system built-in macOS installer. All right, so let's jump into one way out of two that we're going to cover to uh, create such a package that only runs a script. We're going to first use a command line utility. We're going to use package build. Um, it comes with Mac OS and we're going to you know, pass it the scripts variable. We're going to use no payload identifier uh, and version. Uh, I believe identifier and version are required. So let's uh, get started. Let's go to our terminal. We're going to create a directory. Uh, where we're just going to create a top, top level directory where our files are going to be. We're going to call it uh, package build demo. We're going to cd into it. And, and then we're going to, oops. And we're going to create a directory where the scripts are going to be. So this directory is going to contain the scripts and any other files that you may want to add that the scripts need. So we're going to make their scripts. And in the scripts directory, we're going to create a script. Uh, and the name has to be pretty specific, either pre-install or post-install. Uh, typically, from what I've seen, the install packages use post-install um, where they do their installation. So let's do post-install. All right, we're going to open this up. We're going to make this bigger. Okay, cool. And let's write a script, right? So, uh, pound bang, bin bash, and then, you know, you can do whatever hello world stuff you're gonna do. But in this case, um, I'm gonna use this opportunity to demonstrate some of the environmental variables available to a script. Uh, for example, scripts can use, you know, dollar zero for the path to a script, $1 for the path to the package, $2 for the target install locations. Uh, for example, if you don't want to, um, if you want to have a custom install location uh, for your, uh, for the install package, not necessarily what the script is doing, but the install location of the package itself, and then $3 for target volume. Those are the major ones. There's a couple other ones. So I've already, you know, I'm not going to, write the script, so I already kind of have a script prepared that we want to use. Um, it's going to create a directory, opt hello in that directory. It's going to create a file dot hello dot txt into that file. It's going to basically dump all this text. So it's going to dump, dump the values of these environmental variables, including install package session, dollar user, dollar home. Um, and then It'll, it'll exit with a, with a, z, with a zero uh, to indicate that it's a successful install. Now, if you exit with another exit code, then the installation is actually gonna fail. Um, the installation process, all right. So let's save this. Okay. Um, and then important thing you wanna do is we wanna make sure that script is executable. So chmod plus x scripts post install. There we go. It's executable. Okay. So now we're going to use that PKG build command. And of course, 
Um, we can go back, he back here and reference what all the options do and any additional options we might wanna, we might wanna do. Okay, PKG build dash dash no payload because I'm not actually including a, an application. Um, it typically, um, that's what payload is referring to and then dash dash scripts pointing to my scripts directory right here and then identifier. So this is the bundle ID and I believe it is required. So I'm going to call it uh, pkg build dash demo as bundle ID and version. I'll say 1.0. Um, just for demonstration purposes, let's let's add a install location, right? And I'm adding install location purely to demonstrate the environmental variables. Uh, specifically, I believe dollar dollar two is going to be different, right? Install location, and I'm going to say users shared. Typically, uh, we install in applications, but you know this is just for demonstration purposes. And I'll call it package build demo dot pkg. All right, let's see. Okay, see quickly, quickly. Um, now I can actually run this, right? I can run it from the command line using um, sudo installer dash pkg. Da target dash. Um, but I'm gonna, in this case, I'm just gonna do it uh, through the GUI. So I'm gonna open this directory in Finder and I'm gonna just double, double click on this package. And then we see the standard kind of installation process that you see when installing other packages. Uh, it's asking for my admin password. And there we go, installation successful, right? Uh, so uh, you see I did ls here earlier, so we did not have direct that directory here. So if I do ls, I see hello now. So if I go to hello, I see hello.txt. And what's inside hello.txt? Okay, we, we have stuff here, all right? So this is, you know, uh, during installation, it's, it's the installation is being run from a temp directory, so we kind of see uh, how things are being done here. Uh, this is the the path to the peak to the PKG, and this is the install location, right, that we passed up here. Uh, the volume, and then this last part is um, basically it returns a forward slash if this is the startup disk. And then we have some additional variables, uh, session ID, we have the user, uh, currently logged in user, uh, which is me, and then the home directory of that user. Uh, so some good stuff here. Um, let's just for demonstration purposes, run the command line only. Uh, let's go ahead and let's wipe this hello directory. I have to be, I uh, have to do sudo. All right, we don't see it anymore. So let's run um, the command line install. So sudo installer at pkg target forward slash. Okay, install, install is successful. We see it again. We see the file, there we go. Okay, command line install, GUI install. Everything's working great, I'm gonna remove that directory again. All right, so uh, we demonstrated how to use the command line tool. So now we're going to a second way that we can install a package. We're gonna use a GUI tool to install a package and one popular GUI tool to install packages uh, is this packages app uh, from Whitebox. Now, um, maybe slightly, slightly a bad name because searching for packages uh, returns a lot. Um, so you kind of have to know that uh, who it comes from. 
Uh, so we're going to use this GUI tool to create a script only package, right? Um, let's go ahead and open it up. Packages. Okay, here we go. And then we're going to do a new project, raw package, project name. Uh, let's say packages demo. And we're going to put it in here, PKG packages demo. Okay, create, creating a project. Uh, so here is, you know, a lot of config options that you can do. Uh, but for speed, we go to the scripts tab and we're just going to choose a post installation script and we're just going to go back to where we were before. So we were in the package build demo and we're just going to install use that same script that we used in the previous example. Uh, we added it. Uh, what else do we need to do? I believe I believe that's it. We save the, the project file save and then we do a build 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 succeeded um, now we can go through the same process of installing it making sure it works um, but i'll save some time and um, i want to point out a couple other things so uh, one of the things you might want to do after you create a package is analyze what's inside that package and not only for your own packages you know once you know how to analyze your own packages it's also useful to analyze other people's packages. So one popular tool to analyze packages is called suspicious, suspicious package. So we're going to use this suspicious package to analyze the package that we just created with the packages app. And I'm saving packages a lot. Let's go to PKG packages demo. Um, and that package that we built is in the build directory right here. So let's do open this in Finder. And we're going to open with suspicious package. Here we go. Open the suspicious package. And there we go. Uh, we go to all scripts. And we see our script here. We also see this package info that was created. Um, that has you know some metadata and by the way you don't see the package info by default you have to enable it uh, let me see if i can remember how to enable it uh, preferences general and here we go uh there's this checkbox package info files in all scripts tab so by default it's unchecked um, but if you're a power user and you want to see you know everything um, you want to see this metadata, you can enable package info, distribution file. Um, these two things are useful. Okay, so that is how we like to analyze our packages. Another thing you have to know is if you're distributing this package, um, you may need to sign and notarize it, right? Especially if um, this package is being downloaded by someone over the internet, you know, um, Mac OS has pretty good security, so it may not let a user uh, run this package. Um, to, to sign a package, you need to have uh, need to join the Apple Developer Program, which costs as of uh, right now ninety nine dollars per year. Uh, and I will briefly, roughly go over how to how to sign. I will not actually do an example, but um, good starting points is the product sign uh, command line utility to uh, sign your package. Basically, you get your certificate and private key, uh, put in your keychain, and then you run product sign, dash sign, uh, dash dash sign option uh, to sign your, uh, your package. And then you also want to notarize it. And there's a notary tool um, that basically sends it off to Apple. And then Apple checks it. Uh, I think it does like a virus checks and things like that. Uh, and so then Apple knows that this your package is notarized. Um, okay, so let's talk about distribution, right? So you've created this package. Uh, you can post a download link on your website. You can uh, you know upload it to a package manager, or if you're running uh, an MDM platform like Fleet, 
you can upload the package to the SAMDM platform. Uh, it's a website for Fleet Hub here. And I'm actually gonna do a quick demo of how to do that. Uh, okay, so I've opened up uh, Fleet. I'm running a local instance. I go to the software tab, workstation. I click add software. Uh, and there's some, you know, things that are already, already built in, but you wanna do custom package. And then we choose a file and we choose the, the file that we just created. So I believe we did, um, let's do the last one. We did work and it was like package, package, packages demo, build. Let's see if we can upload this one. Um, has some advanced options. You can customize how uh, it's been installed and stuff, but let's just, let's just go with this. All right, it's been uploaded. So we see this packages demo up here. Um, and then you can either automate this um, to push it out to your uh, Mac OS machines, or you know you can go to your individual machine and install, on, install it there um, manually. Okay. Um, and that's uh, all we wanted to cover today.